We decided for the first time to ditch the chassis. You can see how the whole thing came together. It'll average 650 horsepower. Hey guys, right now we're trying to get this episode started, but we can't decide who's going to do it, me or Morgan. Um, I'm going to go with Morgan. Morgan's trying to run away, but I'm not running away. we are at RG Fab Shop right now. The man, the myth, the legend. It's If it's really Hesperia, this is way nicer than the Hesperia that I know. What part of Hesperia is this? We're on the outskirts. We're the like outskirts. the southeast corner of Hesperia. We're far, right, guys? By it's Silver nice Lake. though. By Silver Lake? Deep Creek Dam, Silver yep. Lake, yep. Yeah, yeah we're deep. You can see kind of back there. Yeah. Hiding out back there. I mean, look at that view. It looks like Bob Ross is over here, man. Let's wash our old brush off. I had to have Morgan here because Morgan knows a little bit more about trucks than I do. <laughs> I just like to come see all the cool stuff. And I think it's going to be perfect for him to host with Rob. So I'm going to be just hanging out in the background being a fool. But Morgan, I'm going to actually hand it off to you, bro. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> so I'm here with Rob. Yeah. Rob, what does RJ stand for? All right, that's actually a good question. So my middle name's Robert. Okay. But all my friends call me Rob in high school. Uh-huh. And my real name's John. So it's John Robert Lindsay is my full name. That's always something simple so, like that. Yeah, so some of my friends called me Rob John. So that's where RJ came from. Rob John. Yeah, Rob John. Now I'm never going to not say Rob John. Yeah. Dude, yeah. that's that's actually pretty cool. Yeah. Everybody becomes their Instagram name. So like, yeah. I would always call you RJ. And people then... call me RJ, and I'm getting used to that now too. And I know when people call me RJ, they know me from Instagram. Rob, let's go over just the basics on this thing. All right. What is it? Besides an off-road truck, what yeah, cab, so what year? This is a 65 F100 for one of my customers, Jeff Greenberg. Yeah. And he just came to me and said, hey, I got a bare cab and I got what's left of the chassis. Can we build a truck? And I said, yeah, absolutely. So we decided for the first time to go ahead and ditch the chassis mm -hmm. and just build our own frame rails. It's just easier. So for that's me, a it's full uh, custom set. I mean, it's, yeah. is it it's rectangle tube. Yep, yeah, square tube. Is it chromoly? Nope, mild it's steel. Mild steel. And then it's plated with chromoly. Mm -hmm. And what you're talking about is front to rear. So yeah. this whole All guy. Plate work. So those are overlays on there. And then there's a frame layout. What? R frame rail hanging. What? Wow, we gotta fix that one. Yeah! A frame rail hanging underneath there. All the way through, huh? Yep. So this thing's on I-beams up front. I-beams front. Threat Motorsports, if I remember correctly. He brought me the beams, he brought me the rear end. And that's a kingpin setup? Yep. And if you guys watch that I-beam episode, you'll be able to tell what that means, and that's a prime example of it right there. And as builds go and you get more serious, as you get into the build, you realize certain things. Like I told him, I said, these are probably great for a play truck, but yep. we're gonna upgrade all the hubs and everything. It's just not gonna live to the capabilities of the rest of the vehicle. And then what's the rear suspension? So we have 48 inch links, I think Threat Motorsport links also. We made the upper links. Jeez, uh, I can't even remember what we're in. So yeah, Camberg. Yeah, so these almost, these might be Camberg links. Yeah, they, you know what they might be? We they build enough tracks similar. that I forget what's what yeah. sometimes. Yeah, yeah, so um, Rob, you're kind of infamous for doing these super high finish and detailed builds. And I always notice like this is kind of your standard rear shock mount. Yeah, we just uh, like to just build a really cool upper shock mount with some overlays on it or some cool Yeah, it's almost it like a jewelry, like a fine touch, a it's, fine finish it's touch. ostentatious jewelry is yes. what it is, yeah. Yes. You can do it simpler probably, but I just, I don't know, it just looks cool to me. Absolutely. Tie it all in like and that. And then your shock package? This has 16 2.5s and 18. 3.5 mm -hmm. bypasses. I think they're 5'2", if I remember. And a two and a half inch bump. The reason I sound reluctant to answer some of these questions, I just pulled this thing out of storage. It's been in for a year and a half. Oh, I wow. forget sometimes, like, 
certain okay. tracks what we've done and what we haven't done so 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 this has kind of been sitting for a bit the guy's like taking it yeah he had some things happen and so he had to right. make some life changes no big deal he'll be back on it hopefully in the next maybe year and he's a great customer so i told him hey i'll just keep the truck for you and when you're ready to roll we'll roll he actually tried to sell it and hmm. he was going to take i think too much of a bath on it and yeah. so he decided just to keep it that's cool, man. I mean, that's good. I'm, I'm sure after going that far into a project. Yeah, ultimately, I wanted to see him keep it because totally, man. He's just invested so much into it. So, I mean, once this is turnkey and everything's ready to go, it's really, gonna be a rat trap. I mean, it already is sure. so awesome to look at. A lot of our viewers like to see projects that are like starting to just get built up. You know what I mean? And not completely done. So this is kind of it right here, man. Well, I always thought it's cool when you show a truck raw like this, not all painted and all that, because you really get to see the details and what goes into building that actual truck. Once everything's painted and powder coated, it kind of hides some stuff. Right, right, right. This is raw. This so is raw. open to interpretation right here. Good right. or bad. How many hours do you have into this already as it is? Uh, that's actually a great question. I forget, but I can tell you that we're probably 1,200 hours into it would be a guess off the top of my head. I can pull the file and give you exacts. Oh, I know, <laughs> I know. But yeah, it's maybe 1,200, I, I'm yeah. guessing at this point. And what's the power plant in this thing? Initially, he brought us uh, the 525 horse uh, LS3 yep. crate engine. Yep. And then after getting my Ranger going, I told him how much 525 horsepower and 5,500 plus pounds feels. Yeah, yeah. And I said, if you can't afford it, let's get you a little bit more horsepower. Mm -hmm. So we sent it to Marizzi and he stroked it to a 418, I believe it is. Yeah. And it's, he says it'll average about 650 horsepower on pump gas. Damn! Damn! I'm just used to fast stuff. So the Ranger's like 700 horsepower, just shy of 700 horsepower, mm. but it weighs 6,200 pounds. Mm. On the street, it feels slow. That's so much horsepower, dude. <laughs> That's it awesome. It sounds like, I mean, to it, us, like it's oh a numbers game because it sounds like a lot, but the bottom line is it's mass and acceleration. And so if you're trying to just move a ton of weight, you just need more torque and horsepower. Right. I think all these trucks should have a thousand. Can you say that again? Just the way you said it. <laughs> and you're coming from the the hot rod world, right? Yeah, like the we, drag like cars. We drag race cars. Yeah. They make a ton of you know. Yeah. My buddy Bowman's Pro Mod. That thing makes like forty two or forty six hundred horsepower or something. Like what? That. It's unfathomable, actually. Forty two hundred horsepower. I've never yeah. even heard of anything. I think like it might that. even make drag more car. Than that. So what else is special about this thing? I mean, what's your what's your favorite part about this whole build? So far. And that's such a good question. Honestly, I like the interior yeah. portion of it. Like, you want to show us that thing? Yeah, I just like the fact that we retained the factory dash. Yeah, it's all steel we dash. Put the, we put the Holly LCQ screen, we mounted it and pushed it into the dash itself. Just kind of smoothed out where the glove box door goes. Yeah. And retained the actual shape of the dash. And then we just faced this off nice and smooth. So we're going to put regular analog gauges on that side. That Will this be a uh, sealed cab? Yeah. AC? Fully sealed up, yep. Air yep. conditioning, everything. Yep. And that's your center console in there? Yep. With a, uh, I guess you could call it a hoon handle or a turning brake? Yeah, the ASD from the drift world. And yeah, they're like the, the they're the console. original style. I think so. Handle. I think they're the first guys to do one, if yep. I remember correctly. Yeah. Besides the old uh, JMR turning brake situation exactly. that old buggies used to have back in the day. Yeah, and I always like how clean you finish things. All the sheet metal is so sanitary and nice. If anybody wonders what the, uh, if they look at the welds and they see that there's like a gold hue to them, um, that's silicone bronze rod. Yeah. And we usually use that for sheet metal because it melts at a much lower temperature. Yep. So then, you don't you work know, out the metal as much. Exactly. So, plus exactly. it has a small amount of flexibility to it. As well. Yeah. So it resists it's, cracking. So. It's not as, it's yeah. not as brittle. Yeah. Plus I like, I don't know, I like amenities. So I always make sure we do tilt columns and all of our stuff and turn signals on the, on the column itself. So you're not having to push a button to, yeah. you know, Hit the turn signal and then forget that it's on. I get embarrassed easy driving down the road with your turn signal and it's embarrassing. Oh, that's a <laughs> tricky, tricky problem. So this is a fuel cell in front of the rear axle. Yep. Now, is that your style? Yes, How do you... and there's so much argument about it. Even SDG's on my butt about it. They want me to just start rear mounting all my fuel cells. I've just come from the car world. Yeah. And in the car world, you keep that whatever weight is changing as centralized as possible. It's the opposite with off-road truck. We're going to start moving the cells back. Yeah. We'll start doing rear-mounted fuel Do cells. you think that trucks... I just was worried about tunability. 
Yeah, you know, absolutely. If, if you have a 100 gallon cell, that's yeah. an average of about 700 pounds. When you start getting light, does the truck start bucking? Does it start sure. doing stuff? So sure. the SDG assured me that the good tuners, they can do, they can compensate for that and they can yep. tune a lot of that out. So we'll start changing that. And when you say SDG, that's a Suspension stock development tuning. Group. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Out of Todd, San Diego. Todd and Duncan, yeah, they're. Yep. Cream of the crop. I believe they are. Yeah. yeah, that's that's a noted thing. I mean, if you look at the top TTs placing, most of them are tuned by us. So that brings us. I'm not us... taking away from other guys, man. There's some dudes out there that are yeah, very, very. There's a lot. With you. I am not trying to say that. There's a lot of preference as far as tuning shocks and, you know, yep. who you want well, to it's use. Like fabricators. And... There's a ton of totally awesome fabricators yeah. out there. Very, very yep. talented people. Yeah. You know? So as far as the back of this thing, we kind of <laughs> went over that the fuel cell is hiding behind the tin work, and it's. Up here you can see the filler for that and then the coolers on top, but what's back here is pretty trick It's kind of a two-part deal. So yep. I like to give credit where credit's due. So I saw this 20 some years ago Matt Walworth designed this whole setup This kind of cam lock yep. deal where it kind of pulls cinches it down the like cam lock style. Yeah This is what I visioned in my mind. I haven't seen it in 20 years or when I first built it I just went off of what was in my mind. So it's probably not verbatim exactly how Matt did it but Yeah, it's just I just did what I remembered. Yep. Yeah, I always thought it was cool So so those are quick the, release pins, right? Just pull the pin. Yep quick release pin with the detent in it And then you just lift this handle up and then this assembly And then another thing we've learned is a lot of times people will change wheels and some wheels have different What's that? What was that? Are you pretty impressed by that? That's some like <laughs> Lamborghini Ferrari door stuff. <laughs> if I did this in front of my friends, I'd feel like Marty McFly coming out of the DeLorean or something. Yeah, and the thing with that, that gas strut that he has there, it's a form of the same thing that you'd have with the hood of your car right. or your trunk or lid. Trunk hatch, yep. But the best part about that is that same consistency that it went up is the same thing it'll do with the tires on it. Yep. So it's just all day long, easy, you know, yeah, on the, you the and, and the chassis. There, when the tires are on this, it actually, well, we'll you're going to find out in a second when we open this trunk. Okay. Because we're missing 350 pounds or 300 pounds of tires. Tire. But one thing we, know, we did, we learned with the Ranger, my personal Ranger is, so if you change wheels, you need to change Sometimes the wheel thickness is different or the offsets are yeah. different. So now we started machining these pieces so that we can actually bolt these pieces on and get the proper distance to sure. sandwich the tire down. So like this is a spacer. Yep. So it just registers in the pilot right here. Sure. And this comes down and cinches on the inside of the pilot. Yep. So, but if you have a different offset wheel, you can machine this to whatever yeah. you need. And then or you machine a different one. Usually a lot of the, like the nicer hubs and stuff, they're hub centric. Yep. So hub centric means that you know, the the hub that you have here, like this is a Camberg hub, the hub and the wheel are machined to tolerance where it just slides on. So even if your lugs are like loose or you're setting this thing on the, on the hub, it, it just the centers itself the, yep, right up. Yep. yep. On the board of the wheel. So that enables you, the bolt-on enables you to change out, you know, whatever that hub centric size yep. is Absolutely. or what the wheel size is, yep. you know, and it's and nice. Different offsets. Some wheels are thicker than others. So that distance where this gets sandwiched and this piece comes down, this tapered piece comes into the center portion yep. of the hub. Yep. That thickness might be slightly different. And the other thing I've noticed too with this stuff, if you just take like a hub, like an extra hub and you have the same thing that you'd have for like your rear axle and you put it on this program, it's extremely hard to get the tire and the wheel on and off when it's a tall thing. You have to lift that all that weight. And perfectly, you have to lift it perfectly square. Yeah, because yeah, if it's actually a good tight fit in yeah. there, you know what I mean? It, you can't cock it sideways or anything. It'll just start binding as you're trying to take so it So it's nice that those are low profile. Yeah, and you can kind of see how this works. Once you push this handle down, it just cinches this whole assembly down. Yeah, so that's putting, down. that's loading it, yep. right? And then you just put the pin in, you're good to go. Okay, so I need you to put as much weight down here on this as you can. Bro. And that's to make like up for the tires. Weight, like all your weight. Right, yep. You ready? Let's go. Okay. All right. There we go. It won't, it won't go too fast. <laughs> there we are. Oh my God. As you can see, oh, it's the parts we are container. storing all of his parts in his own truck. Dang. That Very finished. Awesome, but it's got a decent sized trunk, so you can fit some stuff in there. And those tires are heavy. On average, about 300 pounds in wheels and tires. Two of them if you do two. Dang. Maybe it's like 325. Do you know the wheelbase on this thing? I think it might be 118. It looks almost like a stretch Bronco kind yeah. of size, you know? Yeah. We just build enough stuff that if I'm not in the build, sometimes I forget the details. Sure. 
Well, and it's been put away for a little while, right? Yes. And this is going to be street legal? Absolutely. <laughs> I'm not really that so interested can... unless it's street legal. Well, it's just Everything it's street I legal. Own, yeah. yeah, is loosely street legal. Yeah. Everything I own. And not that I'm owning this, I'm just saying I would like the same thing for my customers. Well, I think too, when it's an older truck like this, your probability of getting this thing actually legitimately street legal is not yeah. really a It's not that concern. bad. Yeah, you're yeah. not too concerned with smog. If it's already been registered, it's non-op, you don't need a light inspection, any of right. that stuff. So. Right. What are you uh, planning for paint and stuff? Do you have any idea yet? I have no idea what, what Jeff wants to do for yep. colors. I want to wrap the upholstery like we do the Ranger and some of the other vehicles we've done, so hopefully he'll let me do that. Another thing that we like to do, we haven't finished it completely, but when you come down in here, Morgan, you'll see we have the firewall, but we also have this panel. Yeah. So I double wall this stuff. It helps keep a lot of the heat transfer mm -hmm. out. So what Rob's saying is that this is, you can so see there's, this, air gap there's a piece of sheet metal here, and then under this aluminum work here, where this panel is, is another sheet metal like this. This aluminum is over the tension of the tube, and this one's recessed, so that's a double layer where you can insulate it, and then it's just keeping a, a heat barrier going yep. there too. I love the look of this thing. It's sanded with a dual action sander. Yep. But I mean, I love that, that silver look. I mean, it, it's patinaed out, but it's like a silver where it's almost aluminum. You know, it has that like just aluminum that feeling. look just kind of looks mean looks to me. For I don't sure. Know why I've always just kind of liked it. Since I was a little kid, I always liked to see trucks in the raw because you can see the craft that's in them and you can see where the areas are worked. And you can just, you can see how the whole thing came together. Well, you know? nothing can be hidden that way too when it's raw. Yep. Like I said, you're completely out there you're exposed the you. yep. awesome well thank you very much for showing us this yeah, thing of course, it's man, a beautiful work of yeah. art give me some space for this being my second one but i just like to check out cool stuff and i don't have a bias towards you know people and their projects and how they do them i just like to see them and they're all so interesting yeah to me. everybody has their style yep. which i like to see i love it it's absolutely cool. yeah thank you man yeah you bet right on Hey, so if uh, you like what you just saw, make sure you comment, like, and subscribe so we can keep doing what we're doing and bring you guys awesome content. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to take this expensive ass shock, go put it on the shelf in my garage so we can sit there for the next three years. <laughs> <laughs>